Hi guys, this is the Betamax man, and we've got a, got a Sony uh, SL HF 500, and it was supposed to be here a few days ago, but uh, it just now showed up today, and I didn't even notice it was sitting on my porch all day. Had I checked the tracking number, um, I would have found out that uh, it was sitting on my porch. So I've been working on the SLH 400 and getting that fixed and I've been working on that all day and uh, most of the day yesterday to get going. I even started working on that one on Friday but it had a couple problems but uh, they're fine now. But anyway, we got this other one. Let's open it up. This is an SLH 500 which is the same as the SLH 300. This is a Beta Hi-Fi. Now, the 300 is newer or older. I think the 300 was actually newer than the 500. But this one came with a remote and manual, and the guy said that it was working. Uh, he said that when he moved it up to the... Uh, upper part of his house, his uh, second story, he said he wanted to use it, and uh, he said, well, it didn't work. So we're going to find out what's going on with it. We're going to unbox it, then we're going to clean it up. Uh, with some, I'm going to clean it with some Lysol. We'll plug it in, and we'll see what the problem might be. He said that it doesn't power up. Now, that could mean two things. Either it doesn't power up because the power supply is completely dead or it doesn't power up because the voltage regulator STK5441 has failed which I just got done putting one of those in uh, the 400 so let's get this thing open now the 400 is the same as the 500 and the 300 only the 400 had super beta so they're both two head machines. So let's get my scissors. Or we'll just use my knife. Yeah, we'll just use my knife. So let's just take a look at the side. And it looks like he packed it well. So, well, no it doesn't. I've seen some packing on the top, but, oh boy, he didn't, I don't think he, I don't think he uh, packed it up very well. I hope it didn't get damaged. It comes with the cover. There's a remote. Okay, it's the RMT-127 which is the proper remote for this machine. Here's the manual for the Beta Hi-Fi. The SLH of 500, I mean. It is a Beta Hi-Fi. SLH of 500. He even gave me the case for the machine. However, he did not pack this thing at all. He threw it in a box. You can't just throw stuff in a box and expect it to arrive okay. Now this thing is liable to be damaged. He just put a bubble wrap on the bottom and stuck it in. Like that's that's not gonna do anything. I'm surprised it arrived okay. I'm really shocked. Let's take a look. Yeah, I'm very surprised this arrived okay. He literally threw this thing in a box. He threw it in a box. That's all he did to it. That's all he did. He put a little tiny a little padding on the bottom. A padding on the bottom. I mean, he did put it in a nice tight box. So maybe the fact that the box was very tight, uh, you know, might have been the reason why it protected it somewhat. But I think it was handled well in the shipping. And that's probably why it survived. Now, 
Here's something I noticed right away. The screws are missing, and it looks like the door is broken as far as far as the latch goes. So at least it does have the the door. Uh, however, the latch on it is kind of busted. But it is a Hi-Fi, Beta Hi-Fi. It's the same as the 300. Like I said, I think the 500 is the older model. It's like a year older. So this one's probably a 84 model instead of an 85. So this thing is a year, this thing is uh, one year older than I am. Let's see if there's a manufacturing day on this. see a date actually so but I believe this was made around 84 to 85 it might even be 86 so it might be the same age as me so don't know all right so the screws are missing on the one side and the other side so yeah the um, the screws are missing so there's no screws but he did give us this little nifty little little um, cover uh, which that's kind of neat but uh, oh the dust cover is kind of cool I'll probably probably keep it because uh, that one I'll probably I won't be uh, I won't be selling the the dust cover. I will be keeping this because this is a cool dust cover and it's got good condition as far as like there's no scratches. I mean there's scratches on the uh, on the uh, door on the see-through window. This thing has a, a window in it and you can see the tape moving inside the machine. So he's been into this thing, and you can lift the lifting the, the thing right off. It's uh, in the uh, home position. Everything looks to be in the home position. I mean, he said it worked, uh, and then he moved it to a second floor or whatever and then it, it didn't work he said it didn't power up so either it didn't power up because of the uh because of the uh something wrong with power supply or it didn't power up because the regulator ic has failed so let's get this thing cleaned up sanitized and then we'll plug it in we'll see what it does so let's get the top back on I'm just going to put some Lysol and I'm just going to disinfect it with some Lysol. You never know, people, you know, with COVID-19, you can't take any chances, you know. So, sanitizing with Clorox or Lysol. I use Lysol because I think Clorox might be a little bit harsh. Um, so I just I've always used Lysol. I'm all I'm a huge fan of Lysol anyway. So anyway, um, yeah, let's uh, let's clean this and uh, let's take a look at it. Okay, guys, are you ready for the moment of truth? Will this thing power up at all? What is this thing going to do? We got the uh, power cord. Let's plug it in. Okay, we have. Uh, we don't have any uh, clock display. There's no clock display whatsoever. We do have uh, a display of a number. Looks like the number 8. 
and we do have the beta indicator is lit up um, but judging by how dim this display is uh, this machine might be um, had a high amount of use I'm afraid this thing might have a whole lot of useless power how interesting when we hit the power light everything goes out so the number 8 is no longer on there all we're getting is the beta uh, logo so we can do some voltage uh, I'll do some voltage tests and uh, First of all, I, I, I do think that we're getting voltage going to the machine because we did have some kind of a display. But let's just check this. And this guy has definitely been into it so let's just see if we get my light will this thing will light up if we're getting voltage going to the machine which we are I don't even know why I'm doing this because I already know it's getting voltage to the to the VCR but So we're getting voltage to the VCR. So we are getting voltage to the to the power supply, but the power supply is not sending voltage to the machine. Let's just see if we could get that number to come back on. But he's right. This thing is totally dead. And, you know, I'm thinking that that voltage regulator is probably shot. So, I truly believe that uh, we probably got a regulator that has failed. Um, I usually like to have two regulators in stock, but uh, I don't. Uh, I've used both of them. Uh, the last one that I had I used on the 400 to fix that. Now I'm thinking the regulator is shot um, because we're not really getting anything. Um, oh now our clock is flashing. Our clock's flashing now where it wasn't before. Yes, this is a voltage regulator IC. This is not a capacitor problem. This is a regulator issue. Regulator IC. Because we have no... The solenoid is not ga engaging when you uh, hit the power. So, what I have to do is two things. Either I can order a regulator. Um and wait for it to come in or I can rob a used regulator out of my one of my parts decks which I've got an SLHF R30 uh, that I could rob the regulator out of uh, to put into this one and that will get this one up and going now this particular model the 500 and the 300 the same machine they're exactly the same it's just that one of them is newer than the other. So this one's, I think, a year older than the 300. So, but the door here is broke. It will not latch. And I'm pretty sure that could have, that could have very well happened in transit. Because the guy didn't put any packing around it to 
protect it. I'm surprised it even made it at all. And, uh, but, but the, there's supposed to be some plastic, uh, tabs in there, and they're missing. There's, the tabs are probably broke off. But at least it does have the door. So what I could do is get a little, uh, like a, um, a piece of Velcro strip. I can cut a small piece of Velcro and stick it on here. And that way the door will continue to, it'll stay closed when you close it. So at least you would, you know, you have a door. And it doesn't look ugly like the 400 I worked on does. Because when they don't have the face plate on there, the door, when it's missing, it makes the machine look bad. But this is definitely a voltage regulator problem. And now our clock is flashing, where before we had no flashing clock. So let's unplug it and plug it back in and see if our clock has went out again. Yep. We have our, our 8 came back. Okay, we our clock display is not showing. Now it is, so okay. So yeah, we just got a voltage regulator. This machine's got a lot of hours on it. It was taken care of cosmetically. It it was taken care of. I think that cover really helped keep the machine from getting scratches and stuff. I think that it was definitely uh, something that was taken care of. But I do believe that this machine has a lot of use. Now we'll also be able to tell, you know, not just by the very dim clock display that it has a lot of hours on it, but we'll be able to look at the head drum. And if, it, if the drum has a lot of shine on it, it, it most likely uh, has had a lot of use. And that 400 I just repaired had quite a bit of use on it as well. But uh, the heads are still good on it. So we don't need to change heads or anything in the 400. But this one may be beneficial for me to change the video heads in this machine. Because the video heads... Maybe quite worn. I'm sure this machine has had a lot of use. Okay, that's condensation. But those heads do have a lot. No, they're okay, actually. I don't think... Maybe it just been plugged in for a long time. It, it might have been that it was just plugged in uh, for a long time now. Um, this model is basically, that 400 I just worked on is basically the same machine, only the 400 had Super Beta. Well, this one's just a Beta Hi-Fi. Um, usually they'll have like, uh, I'm surprised the door doesn't say Beta Hi-Fi, uh, but it does say Beta Max. But uh, yeah, just the condensation on this head. But uh, yeah, there's some sheen on that drum. Now the only way to really be able to tell if the heads are worn is to put a a meter on there and see or put it on the scope you put them on a, on the scope and that will will tell you um, whether or not the um, the strength of the heads uh, but I think this thing has had a lot of use either it's had a lot of use or it was just plugged in for a long time with the clock flashing or uh, or somebody did set the clock but you know but yep 
we've got a voltage regulator IC that has failed on this. Uh, the regulator here. It is good that I see that it does have heat sink compound on it. Sometimes uh, the factory didn't put the uh, any of the heat sink compound on. I've actually seen that. I've I think there was one machine I worked on it and it didn't have any heat sink compound on it. And I don't know if that was from the factory or if it was replaced by somebody and they just didn't have the the understanding that you need to have that compound on there to limit the amount of heat that uh, gets distributed throughout the chip. But uh, I think somebody else was commenting on how there was no uh, compound on the regulator. So there was another guy, another YouTuber I, I seen, he commented on how um, there was no uh, heat sink compound on it. But uh, this one's got some uh, caps here that I'm just taking a look and see if I can see any bulging caps or I don't see any bulging caps it's probably just a regulator but we'll check the caps too because it could be you know that could be the caps could be um, bad on it so but uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll take a look. We'll get a regulator for it and put the regulator in because I can't do really can't do anything until until I get the regulator because um, it won't do anything without one. So, um, however, what I can do is I can. Uh, go through its motions and uh, see if it works. Um, we can mechanically go through the motions, I guess. Uh, but I, I do believe the seller was telling the truth when he said that this thing was working at one time. But let's just run it through the motions and we'll just see. Let's just put the camera down here. And I'm just going to run it through its motions. I'm just going to run it through here. And let's like it might have a mechanical issue too because hold on let's get this thing look like it might have a mechanical uh, I think it does have a mechanical issue so it's gonna have probably a mechanical issue too probably the seller lied about that because it does look like it's uh, like when I try to uh, I'm trying to move the the see the belt shouldn't move like that you shouldn't be able to move the belt like that at all so I bet you the loading gear has probably been stripped. 
So this one's going to be uh, both electrical and mechanical issue as well. Because there's no way that should be doing that. It shouldn't be uh, able to do that with a belt. Because this is... Yeah, because you shouldn't be able to... This should move freely. When I push this arm over, it should move freely. And it's not. It's actually sounds like it's um, got a tooth that's sheared off or something. So, yeah, this thing's got more than uh, more than just to electrical problems. It's got mechanical problem too. So we'll fix that and uh, we'll put a little Velcro on there so that the door will close and stay closed. But. Uh, I think for this week, I'm not going to mess with it. We'll do next weekend. We'll work on it. So this will be a project for uh, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Saturday, we'll take a look at this one and uh, we'll get this one going. I might just go ahead and order another regulator. So guys, one more thing. Uh, I'm I feel like an idiot because uh, if I would have looked, I would have noticed that the this thing was in the loaded position. The tape was threaded all the way around. There's no way a tape uh, cassette's going to go in when it's in its fully loaded position. So I probably chewed the gear up inside here just because of my own stupidity. So, uh, yeah, that's not good. So, eh, wah, wah, wah. I'm going to have to fix that. Anyway, uh, that'll be end of uh, this video. And uh, we'll take a look at it next weekend. So, see you later. Bye-bye.